Framework can be overwhelming, so in this video, what I want to do is break down all the major components in Framework so that you can get to building websites as fast as possible. First, we're going to take a look at the actual software. We're going to take a look at the side panels, the top bar, the canvas itself, and then we're actually going to start building a very simple website, even adding custom animations and text so that you can launch right now. Let's get into it. So in front of us, we have a brand new website. We have no layers, no assets, absolutely nothing nothing, just a very basic desktop that is inputted into our software automatically. The very first thing that we want to do is take a look at what's around us. By clicking on the desktop, it allows us to see the side panels so we have everything in front of us. On the left side, we have pages, layers, and assets. For pages, this is where we can create multiple pages. We have static pages where we can click new page. We have new CMS page for a four page, or we can even add folders. So you can have sub pages inside of that folder. More on that later on. Then we have the layers. Now this is where everything inside of your page is going to actually be. This is where you can see how things are layered and how you can actually move them around. Then we've got assets where we can filter by templates, components, style, and code. After that, we have the insert button. This is where you can start to click around and see all the different pre-made templates from Framer that you can add directly into your project, just like this. And we can start to actually generate some of this fake content, or not fake, but just blank in this case, by this, this kind of content. We have pages, we have individual sections, more on this later on. We've got navigation for your nav bar, and you also have menus here. So menus you can add into your navigation, so you can go ahead and have multi-layer navigation directly inside of your nav bar. Then we have collections, so we can add in a blog, we can add in products, things like that, and then fields that can go within the actual CMS. Later on, we got some more creative stuff, like for example, this fit text, this circular arc, scribbles, countdowns, time and date. This is all kind of extra. It's not really necessary, but it's there if you want it. Then we have media. This is a little bit more important where we have the images and also some videos that you can embed directly on the page. We also have Lottie animations and audio if you want to add that. But again, this is more extra. And then we have the forums. This is gonna be the one of the most important ones where if you have a portfolio page or some sort of simple website and you need people to input their email to get in contact with them, things like that, then this is where you can go ahead and add that. We also have icons. If you need an icon, interactive, for example, if you get to the point where you wanna have different languages and stuff like that, this is where you can access that. But this is all going to be, I would say, later on more advanced. Then you have social where you can embed an Instagram feed, Google Maps, things like that, X, and then utility as well, where you can add in products to sell to different people, for example, from Lemon Squeezy or from Gumroad, as well as custom embed or code blocks. Now I'm going to try to go through this as thoroughly as possible within the time limit so that YouTube doesn't go too far. But you can go ahead and stop and click on the timestamps at any point to rewind to see everything in more detail. But I'm going to try to go through things as thoroughly as possible, starting with the layout here. So the layout is going to be the building blocks of these sections. Now, this comes down to the core principles of HTML, CSS. This is how you can actually structure your elements by having multiple rows and columns. So for example, if we add in a basic frame, we can now start to drag in and just create a frame. You can imagine this as a rectangle. We can just input this and it's now in our project. Now, it's not necessarily inside of our website. If we go ahead and click this button here to preview it, we'll notice that our rectangle is nowhere there. So I can go ahead and delete that. This is just in the canvas. We'll talk about the canvas in a little bit, but for now we can just delete that. And I wanna click on one of these sections if you added in your own your own page here and go to the layers. The layers allow us to see everything. This is kind of like the map of your website. If you don't know where anything is, just click on the layers and open up these small tabs here and you can start to see how everything is built. Within the layout, we also have grids, columns, rows, image, and video. So you don't actually need to go into the insert. You can just go from there directly or you can actually learn these shortcuts, which will be very, useful later on when you get a little bit more advanced and you just want to build a little bit quicker. Now let's take a deeper look into the right panel. The rest of these buttons up here are a little bit extra and they come later on. Maybe the plugins we can talk about later, but for now, I just want to take a look at the side panel here. So if we click on the header or if we're not clicked in there and we just click on that header right there, that white space, it'll take us to the side panel. So the side panel allows us to see 
all the individual elements of what actually makes up that header or that, for example, if we click on the text here, we can see what makes up that text. If we take a look at this placeholder, what makes up this placeholder? So this is like a magnifying glass into those individual elements. This is where we can see the detailed view of everything on our project. So by clicking on this header here, we'll see that we have size, we have position where we can change from absolute to relative, fixed and sticky. So these are different positions that we can choose. For example, if I want to pick absolute, this will allow us to move this anywhere in the page. And this is not gonna be very useful for this scenario. But if we have, for example, an image that we always want to be there and does not come in contact with the rest of the page, that's how we can do that. If you're used to HTML and CSS, this is gonna become very familiar. However, if you're just seeing this for the first time and you're wondering what are all these terms mean, then it might be a good idea to take a look at some of my other videos where I go into HTML and CSS basics to really understand what we're dealing with here before jumping in and messing around with max widths, distribution and all that stuff. But you can kind of get the gist if you just follow along and you just keep an open open mind about all this stuff. It's not that difficult, especially inside of Framer. All right, so then inside of the header, under the position we have relative. Now width in this case is gonna be 100%, but you can change this to be fill, to fit, fixed. And again, this is going to change the composition of everything. We have the different layout stack options here. So this is going to be very important. This is where you can move around your elements based on how you want it. If you're using the stacks here or auto layout, if you're coming from Figma, this is how you can basically dictate the spacing, the size, the distribution. So if I wanted to go from the start, from the end, space between, space around, all that stuff, this is where you're going to find it. You can also change the direction. So if you have a an element that needs to be side by side instead of top to bottom, then that's where you can find that. You can also wrap individual elements. You can gap them, padding. I want to showcase some more advanced layouts later on so we can actually see these making a little bit more sense. But for now, just keep an eye out for, for all the different things that we're taking a look at here. All right, then we've got effects. And I think I need to click into one of these to see the effects. So Framer has made an amazing thing where it's super easy to add in individual effects into elements. So if I go ahead and preview this, I'll see that we have a bunch of different animations happening here. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at one of them. So by clicking on the individual element, or we can go into layers and placeholder, and then we can click on effects and we can see what's actually happening here. So we have an effect that is triggered on appearing. So when it appears, we have a custom preset, which is going to be these individual metrics and we can go in super super in depth into these things and there's tutorials that take a look at super nice and advanced animations and all that stuff but this is not that video this is just a quick overview into the effects how you can achieve them and if you click on all the different elements here you can see that we can add custom effects and make it appear at certain time points and and stagger with different ones it's really cool it's a lot of fun by clicking on the text here so from placeholder to text, we can keep going down. We can see that there's the text style down here. Now, because we added in a custom page here, just this top one, we can see that Framer added in already for us this individual heading style. So this is gonna be pre-done for us and it works, it's fine for the tutorial, it looks nice. But if you wanna change something, anything in here, that's where you're gonna do this. Okay, so you can change the font, you can change the height, you can make it capitalized, you can make it lowercase, whatever you want it to be, this is where you can do that. So the cool thing about this is that it also gives us in three different breakpoints. We haven't touched on breakpoints yet, we haven't gotten to the canvas, but breakpoints is where you can add in, for example, your desktop, your iPad, and then your phone. That is large, medium, and small. And when you create a, or when you add in an, an individual page like this, it will generate these for you these three individual breakpoints. Now, let's talk about the canvas. So the canvas is gonna be everything within the items that we've already talked about. So we have the sidebar, the top bar, and then the right bar, or the other sidebar. Everything in here is gonna be our canvas, okay? So this is a free-flowing canvas. You can move this around as much as you need to. You can zoom out. So you can, if you have a lot of work here, like a lot of images that you're just pasting in to, to have in the background and just Keep it in mind, this is where you're, you're gonna paste that. Okay, so I'm just gonna add in a couple of frames here. Imagine that this is all very important work, a lot of images. This is where you wanna put that pretty much so you can understand what you're gonna be doing. But keep in mind that you're only publishing whatever is inside of this desktop, tablet, and phone 
layer here. Nothing outside of these three layers are going to be published. And you can see that the frames here, the ones that we added on the side are actually not inside of these breakpoints. But if we start to add this stuff in, so for example, phone, you can see that we're adding that in. It's now going to be in our phone breakpoint. So we can see that it's going to be here, this invisible square. Let me make that color that we can actually see. We can see that our element is now inside, which is great. It allows us to be able to visualize all of that. But what about the plugins? The plugins is a brand new thing that Framer just came out with, and it is game changing to the platform. So plugins allow us to really elevate the workload of the software. So Framer has a great base and then plugins kind of elevates that by allowing us to add Google Sheets, HubSpot, CASV imports, and a bunch of different plugins. We can go into the marketplace and see what else is there now because it is a brand new thing. Actually, there's a lot more since last time I looked, but there are not that many as if you were on WordPress or something like that. But this is a great feature that just came out from Framer. So keep an eye on it. Just look at the marketplace and you can see a really important one if you're going to be building websites for clients is going to be Search Console. This just allows you to see what terms are being used for your website when it comes up in Google or ChatGPT now. So it's a very important plugin. But other than that, we have a lot of different plugins that we can use. All right, so now that we know the basics of this software, I want to show you guys a tool that can be very useful for you. So Framer has these pre-built sections that help you create designs and when you click them it automatically adds it in to your to your section which is fantastic now this is great but if you want to reach this level of websites where you have a lot of different animations and layers and all this kind of more advanced stuff it's important to use a ui library that is a little bit more advanced now this is where something like tilebit.io you can use any different ui library but that's where something like this comes in where you have a lot of advanced different layouts and it's available for other platforms as well. Now, the cool thing is that it comes with a lot of different layouts. So if we want to add it in to our page here, just make sure we're on the desktop, paste it in, and we'll see that we get, let's preview it going all the way up. We'll see that we get a little bit more of an advanced layout. Now, this is going to be very useful for us if we want to have more advanced layouts and animations, things like that. But just keep in mind that these things exist. You do not need to use them, but it might be cool to add in these kind of effects every once in a while to really blow up your site and make it feel a little bit more, more wow and awards. But you do not need these kind of things. It's just a good, nice to have, you know? Now for a quick exercise, it's always useful to try to build your own website by yourself, obviously. So a great starting place is going to be the sections, or if you have Tilebit or any, any other style guide, you can go ahead and use that. But by clicking on header, it's going to pop up with this individual component here. And I think it's best to just go from the bottom, select your different layers, your different headers, and just play around with it. See what kind of styles you can create, change the color, see if you can change this, this roundness from eight to something a little bit sharper see if you can get rid of the shadow, you know, just play around with it and see what you can achieve. Now, remember the effects because they're going to be super powerful when you are selecting something. So right now it's completely boring. It's just a bland white box here. But if we go ahead and start adding these effects, maybe by appear, and we have a preset for fade in. We can say that works, but it's not very useful. It's super fast. So it's going to enter and then we can change this to something like this. I'm just playing around here. There's no real science to it, but you can see that now it kind of fades in and we can reload that. So this is something that we can use to elevate our site. It's not going to be super, super necessary, but it's something that we can add. Then we want to go into insert again and maybe add in a feature section that has some text on the left side. An exercise that I always tell my students to do is to go on something like Lapa Ninja to see what the best of the best are doing or go on something like apple.com or .es if you're in Spain like me, and you can see what kind of layouts they're using. I'm not telling you to go ahead and just rip this off and do it for your own sites, but it's important to see what kind of, first of all, layouts are using, what kind of effects they're using. Now, this is gonna be a very advanced type of layout and type of effect, but it's good to be inspired by these kind of things. So in this case, this is an, a good example that we can copy. So we have some images here with text. How would we actually go ahead and do that? So I'm going to delete these two and I'm going to see if we can start from somewhere because let's be real here. This is something that we can do nowadays. There's a lot of different sections, so it's good 
to take advantage and go ahead and start from a solid base. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these components here. Just click delete and take a screenshot of this so we can actually input it inside of our project here. I'm gonna resize it just to see what we've got. And I'm not gonna be doing the actual carousel, I'm just gonna be doing the layout. So we can see that we've got one, two, three, and then we're missing a fourth. So we can go ahead and just paste that in. So we can actually see with the grid why this isn't working the way we want it to be, where we have four elements in one row rather than three and then one going on to the next. So we go into the layout section here on the right side of our screen and we see that we have three columns in two rows. So that is gonna be our problem. We can very easily just change this to be three columns and that'll change that. But then we've got a problem inside of tablet. Now in Framer, anything that you do inside of the desktop will cascade down into mobile. Now this is gonna be true in most of the times and it is true in this case, but for example, it's not helping us to our advantage because the way that we have these individual elements built, for example, we have gap to be 60, so it's a very strict rule. It's gonna make our content have to be 60 pixels apart. So I'm just gonna reset that. And in this case, we can go into stack. So stack, if you remember, allows us to change direction of our content to be horizontal or vertical. And by clicking on the blue, we can see that it's something that has been changed. So we can actually go ahead and reset that. And now if we want to, we can go ahead and reduce that, or we can actually go into the grid and add in, we can make it two columns and two rows. So that way we can try to play with the actual breakpoint rather than forcing it into our specific layout that we want. So in that case, we have this design achieved. We have, we maybe get rid of this layout text here, get rid of that. And you'll see that it's gonna go into the other breakpoints as well. So we delete that and we can see that now we have a blank canvas to add in all the images that we want. And I'm gonna add in a random one just so that we can see what we're working with. I'm gonna add in an old thumbnail here from YouTube so we can see what is happening with this image when we actually add it in. And I'm also gonna change this text to be text example. And even though I'm only typing it on the left side, it's also gonna be happening on all the other layers that are connected to this one. Now we're going a little bit over time here, so I'm just gonna zoom by these last few settings up here. But on the top, we have the publish button. This is gonna allow us to publish our project and it's gonna give us this random URL. If we want to go ahead and update that URL, we can go to add domain and we can change our own domain to whatever we want. So I can call it our now's fake website, something like that. And now this is gonna be a real life website that exists in the universe. So you can type this in Google and you can actually find this website. Then we also have general where you can find different website settings like your favicon, social previews, password protection, all this stuff. You've got redirects, forms, staging versions, and then different paid plans if you want to have more CMS pages, all that kind of stuff. But that's not necessarily important for this video. So that kind of concludes this crash course into Framer. We've understood number one, what we're actually looking at, the sidebar, the top bar, the right bar, how to go into insert and add in pages, sections, how to actually transform our sections via different breakpoints, and a lot, a lot more. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to answer all of them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.